Another tip while teaching marking, and I find that this is a really important tip, and especially to generate good hunting dogs. Remember, this is focused on hunting dogs. What you want to do is, till the dog is 10 months old, maybe even a year old sometimes I'll do this with a dog, is if you're here with your dog at heel, at, at your side, ready to run a, a marked retrieve, your gunner is standing out in the field, perhaps 100 yards away. The gunner should throw the bird in a nice high arc, and then when the bird lands, that's the area of the mark. Now your dog will mark that bird from the gunner. Perhaps you have the gunner wear a white jacket or a white t-shirt or something like that. One thing I do want to point out here, and this is a very critical lesson, have the dog Obviously proceed to the area of the fall right there at the mark. This is where the dog is going to go. This mark should land behind the gunner. Now, what I mean by this is if you draw a straight line to the mark and then you connect the gunner to the straight line, that should be about 90 degrees, give or take, which means the dog runs level with the gunner and past the gunner. This teaches the dog to run past whatever the dog is using to mark. Because later in his life, it won't be a gunner. When you're hunting, it might be a bush, a tree, it might be a reed bed in a lake or something like that. But your dog will mark off something in the environment. And then your dog will learn to push past what he's marking from. Now, when the dog is 10 months to a year old, I will surprise him in medium cover where he can't see the dummy. It won't be a white dummy. I'll throw an orange dummy or a black dummy. And I'll have the gunner throw the dummy in. Now, what happens here, if it's medium cover and the dog has done 200 retrieves over his life or more, obviously he's a year old, he's going to have done a lot more, the dog is going to overrun this fall most likely. He will overrun this area and he will go to where he's used to going, pushing past the gunner. When he does that, he'll hunt back and he'll find that bird. Now, when you do this a couple of times, what you'll teach your dog to do is when you come close to that which you're marking from, drop your nose to the ground and run right through to there. You're going to cover a 40-yard area with your dog looking for the game. Now, there's three areas you should throw dummies to. As I say, angle back is what you want to do for, to establish this behavior of running through the gunner. But you have angle in and you have flat. So there's three main positions, angle in, flat, and angle back. As your dog is accomplished in the angle uh, on the back, then use any of these three and use them in different uh, contexts and, and different times. One day you might, you might do uh, multiple, you might do all three of them together to teach him. He'll drop his nose and he'll run right through. It's an extremely good lesson, very efficient way to teach dogs, high success rate in retrieving game. Now we're going to move on to the all-important single and double retrieves. Now firstly, I want to make sure that you understand that from the day the dog's a puppy, you got to turn that dog on to retrieving. Have a sock rolled up, a white sock or a black and white sock, because dogs see in black and white. So get something black and white or purely white and throw it down a hallway. Let the puppy run after it. And as he takes it back to you, he can't go right nor he can't go left. He's got to come straight back to you. And then give him lots of praise and lots of petting and lots of fun for that puppy. When you do this and your dog starts to achieve a little bit more age and a bit maturity, then what we're going to do is when we're walking with the puppy, we're going to take a dummy and we're going to throw it for that dog. He's going to run out and get it. And as the dog comes back to us, we're going to run away from the dog and we're going to make that dog chase us down, teach him that he has to retrieve right to us every time. When all that good work is done, we're going to structure a single retrieve. Now, in the beginning, you can just throw the dummy and let the dog get it in a, in a very structured manner. But at some point in time, we need to transfer the dog, his thinking from you throwing the dummy to somebody else throwing the dummy. Because in a hunting situation, you're going to raise your gun and shoot a bird and the bird's going to fall. You are not going to throw that bird. So we want to use other people to launch the bird, make the sound of a gun, and you send your dog out. This way you can achieve longer and longer and longer retrieves, and you can introduce factors such as crossing roads, crossing ditches, crossing rivers, uh, wind, all these kind of factors that affect how a dog approaches a bird or approaches the area of the fall. So what we do in the beginning is we use a lead. Now I tend to use a slip lead, 
The advantage of the slip lead is the slip end that normally goes around the dog's neck, I tend to put it on my wrist and I tighten it on my wrist. Now I have almost a free hand and I hold the other end of the lead and I loop it over the dog's neck. When I give the dog the retrieve command, I let it go, I have nothing else to do. So this is what I want you to do and the release command can be anything. A lot of people use the word back, which means bring it back. Some people use the word fetch. I recommend not using the word fetch and there's other reasons we'll discuss in the advanced session. What I will do is I release my dogs on their name. The reason being is I hunt both dogs together. And when I hunt both dogs together, if I say the word back, they'll both run out and get the bird. So I'm gonna send Cal on his name Cal and I'm gonna send Jet on her name Jet. Now Cal is steady and he's not going to break, I'm not going to put a lead on him, however I will hold a lead on Jet because she's had very little training and she should have had a lot more training through, due to her age right now. So I'm going to explain this to you, I've explained this to you and I'm going to demonstrate it and we'll give them each a retrieve as I throw the dummy. And then what we'll do is we'll have my son Jason throw the dummy and launch it and we'll use these dogs to go out and get the dummy. I won't throw it and you can see then that you can elongate the distance continually as to how far the dog will go. And the word marked implies that they see the bird or the dummy in the air and they see it fall. A blind retrieve is when the dog doesn't know anything's out there. These are marked retrieves. We begin by throwing the dummy ourselves and restraining the dog. So I'm going to use this leash on my arm around the dog's neck and restrain the dog. Cal I will not restrain because he's steady. Although Jed is reasonably steady, let's display this. Mark. Cal. Boy. Good boy. Give. Mark. Jet. Good girl. Good girl. Heel. Give. Good girl. Mark. Jet. Good girl. Heel, sit, give, good girl, hi on, happy bump, hey, happy bump, good, good, happy bump. The disadvantage of such a retrieve is that you can only throw a dummy so far. What we're going to do now is we're going to do a single retrieve thrown by another person and we call that a gunner retrieve. We're going to have a gunner walk out into the field and have him either shoot a pistol with blanks or yell ho ho or hey hey whatever we agree on and as he does that he's going to launch the dummy in the air. Now when you do this try and launch the dummy in a nice arch and there are three positions the dummy can generally land in. There is what we call flat which is if you're in the position of the dog and the trainer and I'm in the position of the dummy thrower if I throw it perpendicular that's flat. If I throw it back at 45 degrees, that's angle back. And if I throw it in closer at 45 degrees, that's angle in. Now each of these has a different channel challenge for the dog and can convey different information and learning potentials for a dog. What I recommend for young dogs and dogs perhaps from, you know, zero up to perhaps a year old is throw most if not all your retrieves angle back. This means that when the dog leaves your side and runs to the retrieve, he must run past the thrower and he must run to the bird past the thrower. Now this is a key lesson for teaching dogs to mark for long, long distances. And what it teaches a dog to do is the dog marks off an object. Right now it would be me, the gunner throwing the, throwing the dummy. The dog marks from the thrower to the fall. And you want to teach him to drive past what he's marking from. So then, you're out hunting next year, you raise your gun, you shoot a bird, the bird lands 20 feet somewhere to the right or the left of a bush. 
What you can do then is when you tell the dog to mark, he sees that bird come down, when he runs out, he's marked from the bush, he will drive past the bush. And then later on, we can teach him how to hunt back. But it's easier, and it's, it's very easy, to teach a dog initially to overrun. But if you teach him to hunt short, it's very, very difficult to teach him to overrun. So it's, it's a key lesson that young dogs angle back. As the dog gets a little bit older, surprise him with an angle in. He will overrun that bird. He'll go past the gunner and hunt his way back. After you do that three or four times when he's 10 months old to a year old, when he gets close to the area of the fall, he will drop his nose and he'll run right through. And now he's covering a 40 yard area with his head down into the nose and he knows the fall is somewhere in this area. Okay, we're going, to, we're going to begin this gunner throwing mark by restraining the dog that's not 100% steady. And we're going to give a visual clue to the gunner. I'm going to wave my right arm in the air and he knows what that means. And then we're going to send the dog after the dummy descends and hits the ground. Before we do anything, we're going to give the dog the verbal cue so he knows there's something going to enter the air. Mark. This is one great way to introduce complexity. We're going to stay and remain in the soccer field. The dog has had success on a single marked retrieve thrown by a gunner. Now I'm going to throw a dummy myself so that the memory bird, which is the bird Jason throws, will land first. And then I will give him the command to cue again. I'm going to say mark and I'm going to throw a second dummy. When I throw the second dummy, that is the go bird. I'm going to send a dog for that bird. Dogs typically go for the last bird down first. They normally approach the last bird first. So that's what we're going to do right now. I want to show you exactly how to do this and do this in a structured manner and look for success. Then get another helper and put two helpers out there and do more complex doubles. Do a check down and a, and a longer single. So, so put two singles together. Or another really good way to introduce your dog to doubles is just introduce them to two singles. Put two gunners out there and run them as singles. So Jason would throw a bird and then you would run the dog and then you have another helper. And when the dog comes back with the Jason bird, send him for the other bird. That way we have two gunners out there. The dog sees it, but he runs them as singles. So that's a really good way to increase complexity between a single to a double. And it's a good way to introduce complexity between a double and a triple. So you might get him doing triple singles, but when he approaches the line and he looks out into the distance, he sees three gunners. This is also a really good way to stop head swinging. Because if you take your dog onto doubles and triples too quickly, your dog won't know which bird he's going for. He'll look from the left to the right to the left to the right and he'll be swinging his head. And then he loses concentration, he loses the mark, and you'll have a lot more failures. So if you bring dogs out on doubles and triples and you run them as singles, you really get that dog focused to lock into one area and the dog focuses on that bird and forgets about the other gunners. This will be a great success in your hunting and a great success in your field trial career too. The dog should align himself for the other bird and if not you can help him do so. Cow. And we'll teach you how to align him in the advanced training. Here he comes back. That's a successful double. This is a real easy way to introduce your dog to doubles, and you'll have lots of success with it. Good boy. Give. Hi on. Hey, happy bump. Good boy. Good boy. Happy bump. Good boy. Good. Give. Good boy. Hey, look at that. Hey, happy bump. Give good boy. So there you go. We began with a single, and within five or ten minutes, we got the dog onto a double. He's been completely successful. He's happy. We've reinforced him with some joyful play and happy bumps after. What more could a person ask for? That's enough training for the day. 
bring him back tomorrow and do something else. And as he gets solid on this, increase the distances. After you increase the distances, increase the terrain complexity. Bring him to rivers and bring him to ponds and ditches, and then introduce him to angle backs and longer cover, higher cover, uh, take him to longer grass areas and the cross areas between different terrain from stubble fields, from wheat stubble to corn stubble and from, from uh, soybean fields and bring him to marshes and add all kinds of complexities to get your dog familiar with that. Have a lot of success with singles and doubles and you have a great hunting partner for the rest of your life. One critical thing with dog training is we do not want to test the dog every time we take the dog out. We want to teach the dog and not test the dog. This is highly important. In order to do that, we set up, we, we look at what the dog can or cannot do. If the dog fails in, a, in, in uh, one of your setups, then go back and look at why he failed. If he's running short, uh, you know, teach him angle back retrieves or whatever it is. If he's crossing water or river square, you might want to go back and teach him how to angle obstacles. You know, start off in a little culvert or maybe a log or a, a piece of pipe in the yard and then, and then graduate him up till you can control that he is actually taking a solid angle. However, when it comes to marks, be it singles or doubles or anything like that, a really good principle here, and especially with single retrieves, is to do them in sets of three. You know, some people call them three peats. So what you would do is you would have your gunner here. Uh, let's say your gunner is right there and he is going to throw a mark and he throws a mark and it lands there. Your dog proceeds to the mark, returns to you. That's a retrieve. As the dog is returning to you, have your gunner walk at an angle right here. This is his new position. When your dog has returned to you, the gunner is in a new position. This may have been a 100 yard retrieve. This could now be, when he throws that, that would be a 130 yard retrieve. And then, as he's returning from that, have your gunner walk out here. Now you're changing the angle and you're changing the distance. And remember, the first time I do a lesson like this, the wind might be this way. Now I'm teaching the dog to hold a line against a wind from the right. But there's no scent from the old falls infecting the dog's line. When the dog's more accomplished, I might run that and the wind would be in this direction. Now when the dog runs up here, you have an old scent here drifting across and the dog has to ignore that scent and proceed to the mark. Little bit more complex, but you can see now you're teaching him scent discrimination. He's going to discriminate and say, that's not a very strong scent. I trust that I marked off that guy. I'm experienced. I'm going to drive through and go to that mark. And then when he runs up to the next, to the third one, which may be 150 or 170 yards, now he has two old scents. So you get the first old scent, which is really weak, because now the angle, he's farther away from it. And then the other fall has a, you know, a stronger scent, but still a weak scent, and he pushes through both those scents because the wind is out of the left. So consider factors. Now there might be obstacles here too, right? There might be a roadway, or there might be a pond or something like that. But this is how you teach your dog. You push your dog out a little bit farther every day. And, but do these in the same lesson. You might go to the field and do a three-peat like this and then play with your dog, give him a happy bump, let him relax a little bit, and then go do a different setup and do a three-peat and you're done. That's a good lesson for the day.